Good afternoon, everybody. Here we are. We're back live. Let me just readjust my banner because that's looking a bit not blocking me thing in, am I? There we go. How are we, everyone? Just doing a bit of uh, editing. Hope you can hear me just fine. Let me just double check on the thing before we get going. And uh, it's been a good week, although I must say the river that I fish is abysmal. <laughs> so that's really annoying. Can't get out on the river like I'd like to. So that's very annoying. Uh, where are we? View your channel. Can you hear me OK? Get everybody's chats. Get your comments in. Get the likes in. Let's get going and let's get um, chatting about today's topic, because I think last week's was really good. Um, and I was amazed by how many of you commented and how many people watched it. It was really good. And it's great to get some some good feedback off everyone. If anyone didn't see it, um, we did one on lines last week. We looked at various lines, mainly um, mainly like rig lines and stuff. But it was all about lines last week. And it was just a great response. And I think a lot of you um, commented. You've got over 200 comments, which is which is mental. Really appreciate that. Thanks for everyone who got involved, because I think line's such an amazing subject. That uh, Morning, Phil. Um, it's such an amazing subject, and it seems to divide people as well. It's, it's amazing how, um, how people can have such different outlooks on something. Like me, I like a... Like power lines, so I like something that's soft and stretchy and um, just doesn't let me down. And then other anglers want ultimate precision. They want something like a tournament rig line that's like super precise, and that's great as well. And and I get and I get both sides of the argument. Um, and then you get people a bit a little bit like me. I like fish don't have micrometers, so why are we were worried. Um, and then people who like the older lines, your sill stars, your double strengths, and then some people who want the absolute pinnacle, which I'd say that stream, comic stream, to me felt like just an unbelievable line. Um, I had a chat, sorry, I think it was David who sent me a, a, a table of results. He'd actually been through and tested all the lines that I'd mentioned, plus some others, and done breaking strain tests, abrasion tests, and all that. So having all this information come in was fantastic. And I just thought, what a brilliant exercise that was. Because um, I just I just think it's interesting to find out what everyone uses. And obviously, when I used to be at Preston, we can only talk about Preston lines. But being able to now talk about all these different lines is fantastic. And like I say, I was going to do one about um, real lines. But I, I, to be honest, I didn't get a chance to get to the shop and buy some different ones. Because I know that stuff like Bayer, uh, LA Philip, all the way from Australia watching us. We've got 35 of you watching at the minute. 13 likes. Let's get let's get to 50 likes, everyone, once the viewers start creeping in. Um, yeah, and I, I wanted to get some Maxima. I wanted to get some Dren and Float Fish and all that sort of stuff. But I just didn't get a chance to get to the shop. So maybe next week we'll have a look at real lines. And I thought today's topic could be a really good one. And again, just like with lines, I think hooks are a very, very strong topic to discuss about today. And I thought that is the perfect one to discuss because there's something very interesting going on in my fishing and other people fishing that I know who have found the same thing. And it's it's that the modern hook versus the old hook. By that, I mean the modern coated hooks and then the old school ones that weren't coated. Um, some people are definitely make, are finding the situation where the not having non-PTFE hooks can be an advantage Likewise, having PTFE hooks or coated hooks are an advantage in other areas. So I thought that'd be a really cool topic to start with. And I just wanted to say that I thank everyone for subscribing, watching, liking. It means a lot to me and it's great to have such a good audience. And like I say, last week's one was a, just a brilliant discussion and a, and a brilliant chat. So if we can do something like that again this week, that'd be great. So my task to you is let me know in the chat what hooks you are currently using um, I think we'll stick with commercial based hooks for now. Um, I don't. I, I haven't got much knowledge on modern natural hooks, to be fair, because I know there's a lot of hooks like your high abusers and your owner hooks and stuff like that that people use. But I'm still quite old school when it comes to natural fishing, and I use um, like Camasan and Drennan hooks and stuff. So um, I think we're best talking about commercial hooks, which I think are the most popular. And once again, I went to my tame hook tire. Jason Gilbert from Hooks to Go. Shout out to Jason. Uh, I bumped into him last week and I just asked him, I says, look, what are the most popular hooks that you tie? Because um, as you remember last week, he proudly said that he believes that tournament rig line is the, is the best line that he ties. 
um, and I asked him about what are people using hook wise and he said without a doubt it's the guru range by a mile he says um, still tires a lot of B911s still tires some GPMs but he said there's a massive difference between the numbers of those hooks oh it's raining again chucking it down again unbelievable more rain in the river um he believes there's a massive difference between everybody else's hooks and then gurus when it comes to the numbers of anglers using them and whether that's just the match angler in us that are all using the guru hooks uh, or what it is there's just a huge popularity surge around guru hooks at the moment um, and i'm just interested to find out what you use um I probably missed the boat when it comes to Guru hooks, if I'm honest, because before I um, moved to Preston, I was still using a lot of B911s. I was using F1 pellets. I really like those hooks. Uh, then I used the Preston range, obviously, when I was there. And then, but before that, I always used Camasan, and I've largely gone back to a lot of Camasan hooks. So I probably missed having the, the, the Guru era of hooks, if that makes sense. Um, the one, only ones I've got much experience with are these beauties, the F1 pellets. QM1s, which I think are fantastic hooks for those situations where you want to just make sure you're going to give yourself best chance of landing anything. I think that's that's a great hook. Um, like I say, F1 pellets. Latterly, F1 maggots. Mick, uses, Mick files, obviously, I spend a lot of time fishing with Mick now. He absolutely loves the F1 maggot for his feeder fishing. He thinks it's a brilliant hook. Um, so I've been giving those a try. And I also use the pellet waggle hook for my pace fishing uh, in the summer. I use it in a size 10. It's a lovely wide pattern for pace fishing. Really like it. So I'm looking forward to maybe having a look at SLWGs and stuff like that. But to be honest, the hook I use the most now is the classic. The B911 in various forms. And I've gone back to these. And I just, I find it so hard to fault them. Obviously, you've got various different ones from F1 You've got extra strong, you've got the standard, you've got the eyed, you've got the extra strong eyed. I just love them. Um, when you get them out of the packet, they don't compare in sharpness to a, um, a PTFA hook. They just don't, and they're just not as sharp. Um, it just, they're just not as sharp, but whether you've caught £100 on them or £10, they're, they're the same. They never seem to lose the point. And I think that's a massive advantage personally. And I just know that when I took one of them out, it's the same. It's consistent. And I just love them. And I've been using them all year, um, in, like I say, in various forms. I use the, for my hard pellet fishing, I use a 16, normal B911 I'd love it. Um, when it comes to somewhere like the Glebe, for example, where I'm fishing for much bigger fish, then I'll, I'll use the extra strong 911 I'd. And then, like, I've been using the F1 one recently for um, silverfish feeder work, like when I went to Holcroft the other week um just just brilliant pole fishing for skimmers and stuff i've been really enjoying that hook as well and that's i've got to be honest when i first used that i didn't like it i had some i had some funny times with that hook and um but i've really liked it recently so we're interested to see what you know a lot of you are saying kamasan hooks a lot of you are saying guru and a lot of you are saying drennan so there's a lot of stuff there and there's an interesting comment there lee wilson's asked said that preston have way too many patterns i think that's quite interesting because i think preston only had five or six patterns of hooks I know they've got the natural ones, but I think Guru have got a lot more than that. Um, they've got so many patterns. Um, so, yeah, I've just really enjoyed using Kamasan hooks again this year. Um, the last few years I've been using them, GPMs, and I caught with the eyed version. I caught, what was it now? I used the same rig because I kept it on my top kit. So I used the same rig for three matches, <laughs> never changed the hook, uh, size 12, one of them in, a, in an eyed, and I used the same hook. So they're as tough as old boots they are. And I can't speak for other um, curry ducks, but they are tough as old boots. And I think they're probably quite an underrated hook then. I think LWGs, SLWGs, blah, 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 um, have, have definitely taken the limelight off them. But that's a really good hook if you uh, have ever not looked at them. As is that. Now, SFL stands for Silverfish Light Barbless. It's not a silverfish hook in my view. It's, a, it's, a, it's um, like a spring autumn winter carp hook slash f1 hook that sfl i think they got the naming of it wrong but it's a really good pattern that is um i've used that so much uh it's so sharp and it's a good up for this time of year it's not like i say it's not a silverfish hook it's not the one where you want to put a single maggot on or a um, double pinky or whatever but if you're fishing pellets soft pellets 
small grains of corn, that kind of thing. The SFL is such a good hook. Um, really like that. So let's just have a look at some of the questions. Let us know, like I say, in the chat. Let's get to 50 likes. There's over 50 of you watching already, so that's brilliant. Only 23 likes, though. A lot of you using Kamasan, a lot of you using Guru, as predicted. Um, one thing I want to know from you guys is how many of you use pre-tied hook lengths as well? Because um, I think that's a massive thing these days, isn't it? The, the pre-tied hook market's massive, and I think a lot of you, rightly so, are using them. Uh, Guru, pressing up way too many patterns. Q and one are also great for feeder fishing. Yeah, them Q and ones are fantastic. I was actually with Guru at the in the early days. Um, and I remember using the 16 all the time when they'd just been re released and they were they were brilliant. I think everyone's gone mad with like the 10s and 12s now, aren't they? But the 16s are good up. Uh, consistency from camera sounds awesome. Yeah, I can't ever remember getting a bad camera sound up, to be honest. Being on 11s. Morning Joe, fishing a club water full of big F1s and small barbel. I've been using the Guru F1 maggots and the Drennan Acolyte maggot. Interesting that, Matt. Then... Someone mentioned to me about the Acolyte hooks the other day, actually. Um, I've not actually seen them, but I can imagine they're really good. Uh, I don't think Drennan make bad hooks at all. I think they make really, really high-quality hooks. So I'd be interested to see those Acolyte hooks. Um, it'd be nice to see what, what they've got to offer. I'm, I'm being told they're really good. Um, Kenny B. Hello, Kenny. Great to see you on United View the other day. Good morning. Hope you're keeping well. Never mind. Wait, wait, wait. Never mind, I'd barbless PTFE coated. Are we going through tonight and smashing Liverpool at the weekend? Jesus wept. I haven't even got my mug today. I'm on SeaWorld settings today. Mm. Are we going to win tonight? I hope so because Mr. Ringer's going tonight with his lads. So I'd love to see us turn over Bayern. They got beat at the weekend. This is optimistic Joe talking, but I would settle. I just don't think we're going to win, <laughs> if I'm honest, Kenny. And then I, I, if we can keep it below 4-0 at the weekend, then I think that's a result. But anything other than that, I think it's a result, to be honest with you, because I, I could see us getting an absolute drubbing at the weekend. There's nearly 60 of you watching, and we've only got 25 likes. That's really poor, gentlemen. Let's get let's get liking. Um, right, some more questions and more answers are coming in. Pre-tied, Guru all the way, SL G and Kaiser in summer, F1 Pellet and F1 Maggot in winter. Never use pre-tied, always tie my own. Pre-tied for me. Um, the hardest site struggling to find four inch hook claims now. I've dropped in line down for winter. Any suggestions? Yeah, I don't think there's any sort of refined four inch hook claims if I can think of it. A lot of them, the ones there, even method based or like your GPM do one in 14. I'm not sure on that one, but one thing, um, you can easily do is shorten your six inch hook claims, just take it off the pins or take it out of the packet and whip it around the thing. And you've just got enough, it's a bit fiddly, but you've just got enough to tie your own loops in at four inch or even three inch. So you can shorten them. So if you can only get your six inch guru or clamps or adrenaline or clamps or whatever you use, um, you can shorten them yourself. So there is that. Um, two other hooks that I absolutely adore, and it's something that I have a lot of, um, uh, see you later, Talmo, thanks for watching, is these beauties. Now, I don't even know if you can still get them, but for me, they are legendary hooks, especially when some, the conditions are hard. And I've caught so many fish at Tunnel Barn with that gamma green, which was my joker hook back in my um, team fishing days when I used to fish uh, Bloodworm and Joker all the time on the staining and stuff. I used to use a 20 or an 18 green gamma with double joker on all the time. But the strength for them, the wire on them must be so good quality, such good quality, the wire or steel, whatever it, they're made out of. Like when you go to um, tunnel in the winter and you want to fish single maggot or double pinky or something like that, that was such a good hook in a 16. I used to love it. And you could land big carp on them, even though you would never think it. Like, I mean, you look at that, it's so fine. But they're such a good quality hook that they're just mega. And likewise, the black gamma. I, I was, I've never used that much black gammas, I've got to be honest, because normally, I mean, I, I'll either use something like an SFL or an F1 b911 and then a green gamma i think that's a nice comp like um contrast you've got the super delicate and then you've got the normal whereas i think adding another hook into the mix is a bit makes things a bit complicated doesn't it the fact that but i think a green gamma and then an sfl or a b911 f1 makes a nice sort of um contrast between the two 32 likes we're heading up there 
Drennan do a lower diameter pre tide? I think. Let's have a look. Let's see what Drennan have got to offer when it comes to pre tide. There's it's the four inch thing in it that makes a because I remember when we used to have product meetings at Preston. Um, Des wanted everything at six inches because that's what he uses, and then Robbie and Rumble and the lads there want four inches because they do all F1 fishing and actually getting. <laughs> what Des wants versus you can't do both. So you've got to pick one. It's really difficult. Um, it is really difficult. Let's have a look at the uh, ready tag rigs. Will it be in? I'm on the Drennan website. Let's see what, oh no, that's, that's definitely not the right place to be. Hooks. Hooks to nylon. That's an old school way of putting things, isn't it? Yeah, a lot of six inch again from Drennan there. So yeah, I think your best option is to buy the six inch ones and shorten them down. Easily, easily done. Get yourself a loop tire. And shorten them down. I know it's not ideal because you're buying pre tied for the convenience, but it saves you having to tie them on. Then it comes to feeder fishing for carp. Um, and I absolutely love this hook, KKH. Um, the stronger cousin of the KKM, which I again is a hook I really like. Um, and then recently I've been using these again, a bit of a tip off. Mick tipped me off about them, Camasan animals or legendary hook, but that is so so sharp. Um, and it's one of those hooks it's got a straight shank it's got a lovely turned in point the point's not straight it like goes off to the side just once they're in they're in and um it's a really nice hook and it's so sharp i mean look at that it's a 16 it's tiny tiny little hook that 16 is in comparison to say a kkh there i don't know if you can see the probably hard to tell but it's more like an 18 kkh that is um so yeah let me know in the comments what hooks you're using um, like I say, I'm pretty much a B911 man now for my carp fishing. I use, I've been using the extra strong ones in the edge. Love them. Um, just brilliant. And I'm just trying to simplify things so that when I go fishing, I can just grab a hook, the hook box out of my bag and I know that I've got everything I need in there. Uh, why do you think the tackle companies always put their hooks to nylon on heavy line now when years ago you could get them on light line? It's just um, it's a great question, Steve. And I think it's just... Um, it's what anglers want, unfortunately. Um, that commercial market, that 016, 018, 020 sort of diameter lines or six to 10 pound lines is where a lot of the guys are buying them. And a fair play to Guru, they've they've really grabbed the bull by the arms with that pre tied market. Um, and I've got a lot of options there, but there's still a massive gaps. And I think it's always going to be like that, unfortunately, because the pre tied manufacturing process of breathe out hooks is really difficult um and i think it's such a long lead time to get pre tied hooks done and on a mass scale it's a, it's an absolute nightmare it's a real real head head messer and i just don't think there's a, the um capability of actually having so many different options so it's a it's a it's a tricky one i think um Guru have done a great job with theirs, so it's um, it's interesting to see where that goes because I think that pre tie market's massive. I know Matrix have got a big range now. Obviously, Guru have got a massive range. So really interesting. Lee Wilson says, I had a coaching day with a high-profile angler and he used Camasan hooks as opposed to his sponsored patterns. Very interesting. Bet you can't say who it was. How do manufacturers size hooks? How do manufacturers size hooks? I thought it was the bend so difficult isn't it because i was out with mick yesterday and he's using a camasan b510 in an 18 which was like a 22 b911 <laughs> it was so small um there seems to be a massive difference between the old school sizing and then these modern hooks i mean you get um a, a b911 14 for instance and compare compare that to a b911 um like an animal and it's just just ridiculous the size and then again the animal's an old hook isn't it it's a very old hook um probably to over 20 years old now so i guess that would would have been one of the first generation of the modern style hooks that's uh, still on the old sizing hence the reason why a 14 so 14 there is absolutely minuscule in compared to today's sizing and I, I remember when i did use an lwg before when it, the difference between a 16 lwg and a 16 b911 was quite big from memory um and it used to sit in between i seem to remember so yeah i think you've just got to pick a range that you know and um and, and get get them to work uh most fish for commercial carp on heavier lines and canal silverfish yeah you're dead right there tote and there's just not that market unfortunately for the natural style hooks on the lighter lines and i think 
Um, I just think that's the market, the heavier lines. And maybe one day we could do something. Who knows when we maybe look into hooks in years years to come. We we'll maybe uh, do it. Or if you are looking for light lines, why not give one of the hook tires a go, hooks to go. Like I say, I keep mentioning Jason. He does a great job. And there's several other people who tie hook lengths now. If you go on Facebook and put it in, there's loads of people who do your bespoke hook lengths. So if you are looking for something on a lighter scale, maybe give one of those guys a, a shout and uh, and they do a great job. You just send them the hooks that you want and the line you want, or alternatively, they can buy it for you and then you get it done. So that can be a nice way. If there's nothing on the shelf that you can find that suits your fishing, why not give someone like Jason at Hooks to go a, a call and uh, you might get uh, exactly what you need. In fact, it would be so much easier if all manufacturers made hooks the same size scale. Yeah, I, I do get that it should be standardised across the range, but... It's difficult, isn't it? I think the, the lines have already been very blurred, haven't they? I got a, a 12 car book the other week, like a, a pop car book, not one of our car books. Um, and it, was that it? Oh, it's a 10 one, 12 one of them I had the other day, a crank. Oh my god, it was it was massive. Um, Matrix MXC5 when it's very cold or for bread, brilliant. I, I've never seen the Matrix hooks, I've got to be honest, I'm, I'm sure they're very good though. Uh, Try Jason Gilbert. He will do you pre-tied hooks at a very good price. T cheaper than ShopBot. There you go. That's exactly what I've just mentioned there from Paul. Um, if you do want bespoke hooks to go, um, there's several of us. I think is it Kenty's Hook Lengths and um, a couple of others on Facebook. If you just put in pre-tied hooks, I'm sure you'll be able to find them. And they might just get you what you need. So, guys, are you – because there's lots of you join now. We've only got 37 likes. I want to get to 50. So get liking away if you haven't already. What are you using when it comes to hooks? What brand? What style? Um, we're in that sort of f one ish stage at the moment, dobbing bread, all that kind of stuff at the minute. So for me, it'd be B911 F1s and probably SFLs. Um, but I know a lot of you use uh, Guru F1 pellets, F1 maggots. There's probably adrenaline drenin hook in that sort of style as well. So let me know in the comments what you're using. Um, Gary, another one there mentioning matrix hooks, saying very good. So I've never, like I said, I've never even looked at a matrix hooks. So um, I've been to see what they're like. Okay, that's an old school float, isn't it? That's a Mick Wilkinson paste from many, many years ago. That is great float. And that later went on to become just a staple of my paste fishing. Really, I've got the old sipper. Is he? I've just got. I just found a load of floats just sat here. Um, right, there's a few more people. Have you got any uh, questions? Is anyone? Had any more thoughts about our line debate anyway last, last week? Because um, loads of you are like, can fish even see line? Can they feel it? Why are we you know, fishing light lines? Is fluorocarbon a thing? Do many of you use fluorocarbon? I've, I've got to be honest, I've toyed with it and I've played around with it, but I've never used it with any consistency. Um, where are we? I still prefer light line on my smaller hooks when fishing in Norfolk. Broads for silvers and camasan are the best for doing that. Yeah, I think for natural fishing, you've got your camasan, B510, B520. You've got your B560. Hooks like that are just and uh, B611, B511. Them sort of hooks are just fantastic, aren't they, for silverfish fishing? I've got a load here, in fact. Back in the day, I won the camasan British Open, which came with it um where you could buy it that basically give you a voucher to uh, get a load of hooks and i actually got the what is a t911 now they're teflon coated b911 i got that i won that event in 2010 no 2011 i won the camasan british open um and they give me them t911s then to test but they also give me a look at all this <laughs> look at them classics we've got animal spades which was always my um like lobworm hook on rivers. I've got B511s, B560s, B711s. I just found all them the other day. <clears throat> yeah, that was one of my prizes from winning the uh, Camasan British Open, that little package of Camasan goodness there. Uh, Matrix hooks are very good. It's a Carlo Anglin. I use QM1s and MWGs, pre-tied, and they come with a bit of tubing holding the hair to the shank. Interesting, I think. Kaisen's I also use a lot. Yeah, um, back in... My previous employment at DHP, I used to go out with Steve Ringer an awful lot once a month, and he always used silicon on his bend of his hair rigs. And I, I totally get why he does it. It keeps everything in, in place. You can uh, whip down 
with the line. Rob Button does that, for example. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's definitely something, and it's nice nice to see Guru to go. You know, um, Guru go to that detail of doing it. So really good. Uh, just found four inch matrix MXC six with lower dam and my angling. Oh, there you go. There's a, a um, four inch option there. B911 for all my all round and spade and and I'd. Oh, got a great video I'm going on Newfish this week, actually. Really good. Um, Mick found his old Daiwa Amorphous Whisker Tournament Special. How's that for a name for a pole? He found that in his, uh, I call it his museum, his garage. He's got every bit of that tackle you can imagine in there. And that was a flagship pole from the 90s. And it was so interesting using it because we went and did a video with it. If you, It was £3,850 in 1997, um, which... Um, converts now with the inflation calculator to over seven and a half grand. Um, so if you think about that, seven and a half grand pole, and this pole, it's this amorphous, it's dead slim at 16 meters. When you ship it out, it's funny because there's no taper, so you never know where you are. You get to 30 meters, you don't even know you're at 30 meters. The top kits are really long, um, made in Japan, not even made in Scotland. Um, just an unbelievable pole, and we've got that video going on. Uh, I'll probably put it live tomorrow on the New Fish channel. So definitely want to watch that. It's, it's uh, really interesting seeing how these polls from the 90s, I think it came out in 1992 or something, that poll, um, how that compares to the modern day polls is unbelievable and how much they've come on. Um, and it shows you how they've been developed since. Obviously, top kits have got shorter with side pullers, thicker bushes and all that sort of stuff. And then the poles at our end are fatter as well, aren't they? Whereas back then they were super. But one thing that amorphous is, is strong. So I'd love to um, love to fish with it again. It was a joy to use at 13 metres. Granted, it wasn't as stiff as poles nowadays, but it was lovely to hold because it was so slim. So really interesting. Um, and we, we've got a few more ideas to do them sort of old school. I use normal at rods, for instance. And uh, again, lovely bit of museum tackle. Uh, I always tie my own, feel safer. I've had a few lost fish with spiraling. Yeah, haul it. I couldn't uh, be with you more on that one. I can't fish with hooks that haven't been tied by me. That's, I just haven't got the confidence in it. Even the brilliantly tied, pre-tied ones. The If Jason, who I trust, would to tie my hooks, I couldn't do it. It just If I lose a fish due to a, a poorly tied hook, I want that to be on me. I don't want it to be on someone else. Um, and I, I rarely get that, so I just I can't do it. I'd rather I'd rather sit at midnight and tie ten hooks than I would get someone else to do it for me. But if you haven't just haven't got the time and you're not that fussy, it's a great option. Uh, tell us the tale of Bouncy using silver hooks against bronze on the staining to get more bites from small grouch. Yeah, we um, it's quite a big thing that is. It's probably lost nowadays because the fishing is so much better. Um, but it was funny. We had this chat with Alan yesterday. Uh, Alan Scott on was at Hallcroft yesterday when we were filming. And I remember going on the junkie, for instance, and there was loads of little perch. This was back when I used to fish for Osset. And we won a Division One National. And it was after a massive flood that came through the uh, canal and river system at that time. And it pretty much wiped out the fishing on the on the junction, uh, the new junction canal in, in Yorkshire. And um, But there was still little perch to catch. And one thing, and it was the water was gin clear. One thing that would happen, you could attract them with a glint so a shiny hook a shiny shot of a shiny hook would attract the perch to you and you could see them you could put a black hook on and they'd see the bait of course they would but they wouldn't be as aggressive but you put a, a shiny hook on you could lower it in amongst these perch and they'd just immediately go for it because obviously the sun or whatever's catching that hook and it's just giving it a glint the perch are going straight for it and it was one of those you could catch 30 or 40 of these little perch before exhausting the swim and on a difficult canal it was massive. And the same thing can be said for roach. We've had it for times on the staining and stuff like that. Put a silver hook on, especially for those little fish that aren't as educated. The glint that is caused by that silver hook can just, just trigger the fish to have a go at it. And it's a, like the lure thing in it. You go to in the sea, you use a big flashy perk or a jig or whatever. It's instinct in it for the fish to have a look. And I think sometimes we're so obsessed with being discreet, using black hook, stuff like that, that sometimes actually causing them to snap at something can can actually be a benefit and it's something that we probably lost probably lost because we do so much commercial fishing now and, and to be fair the fishing is so much better now um but yeah that was it's interesting that kenny because um silver hooks are brilliant nickel hooks b511s 
absolutely brilliant. And, and Alan was using a nickel hook yesterday uh, where we were fishing. And he was he was like, oh, God, do you remember the days when we used to always use nickel hooks? So, yeah, really interesting that. Uh, Matrix MXB and MXC for me, then Camasan. A lot of you seem to be liking the Matrix range, which is good to see. It's good to see another player in the hook. Uh, Kevin Elliott says, hook size is a nightmare. Some 16s are like 14s. Tie hooks by hand, cannot use hook tire to save my life. Yeah, I'm the same. I wouldn't even know how to do a hook tire. <laughs> Um, I've never done it. My dad used to be a stickle for me being able to tie hooks by hand before I could go out fishing. He would make me sit and do it. And I, I learned how to do it from an early age and I've never, never not done it by hand. Uh, anyone use Tubertini 808? What great hook that was. I believe, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure the F1 pellet came from the 808s because everyone was using an 808 back then. Um, Steve certainly was because he used to be in my team at tunnel barney he used to use an 808 but the 808 used to lose its point quite a bit um and i think the f1 pellet sort of came from that sort of pattern so um really good hook really really good hook over the years and back when i used to live up in north yorkshire that was the hook that everybody used tubertine 808 great hook i like the shape of the drenon red maggot holds the maggot away from the point is that like a crystal like a modern take on a crystal bend is it let's have a look it's got the red maggot um yeah like a, yeah, i see it's like a modern take on a crystal bend type pattern so like a modern b520 looks really good we nearly got to 50 likes people we got to 45 there's 82 of you watching we've been on for half an hour i want to give you five more minutes of my time can you give me five more likes that'd be fantastic and let me know actually before we finish get your comments in to what subject you'd like us to chat about next week because um like i say we've got um we've got the sort of real line debate but i think that's quite a simple one um there's other things there's bait we could look at we could look at whatever you want floats we could look at all sorts of stuff so just let me know in the comments because i quite like this subject while the fishing's a bit it's a bit shit in it let's be honest um at the minute let's let's sort of talk about some tackle because it's great to have a good tackle debate i know you all love it and uh like I say, for me, hooks are really simple these days. B911s in their various wire gauges. And then there's a few specialist patterns like your green gammas, QM1s, KKHs, animals, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that, my fishing is generally revolved around the old B911s these days. So nearly at 50 likes, everyone. Come on, let me know what you want to chat about next week before I bugger off and get some more editing done. Lee Wilson says, I believe Matrix are bringing new patterns for hooks. That's interesting because they've, how long have they been out now? Um, how long have we been? Have they been out three years now? So, yeah, probably a few more talking about my tackle. Yeah, no one else does. <laughs> um, but I think I'm going to go then if, uh, if everyone's all right. I will see you, everyone. Thanks for watching. Uh, like I say, with that Daiwa poll um, next week's on floats, for both rod and pole yeah i could do some floats i've got some some classic floats to to look at john bonnie wagglers top of floats stuff like that and then obviously the more modern ones like like these beauties okay then good old cypris can't beat them um that amorphous video i'll put that live tomorrow uh yeah if anyone else has got any tips on stopping the eyes on your rod freeze not let me know because i had that the other week when i went chubbing i think it's is it glycerin you meant to put on your rod rings um just let Haul it now because I think it's glycerin. 50 likes, brilliant. Um, yeah, I forgot where I was going. What's the best pole to buy for under 500 quid? Oh, I don't know. You'd have to go and have a look, David. I don't even know what's available at the moment. Uh, when it comes to poles, I've, I've totally lost touch with it. It's funny, isn't it? When, you, when I was at Preston, you knew all the different poles on the market because obviously we were at a vested interest. Uh, keep up the great work, pal. Really enjoying yours and mixed vlogs. Kenny, up the Reds. Hope we win tonight. Let's get it done. Um, it'd be nice to show a bit of willing. I thought when we played Chelsea last week, I thought, here we go. It was, it was another false dawn, wasn't it? Absolute false dawn. Um, and then, then at the weekend, we were absolutely pathetic. But, uh, God, it was a funny weekend for results, wasn't it? And the old football front. A lot of people got a bit walked over this weekend. Right. Thanks, everyone. I'm going to crack on with my editing. New fish channel tomorrow, brand new video, £7,000 poll. Check it out. Thanks everyone for watching, and we'll see you again next week.